I have been spending so much of my time designing and also printing all of these 3D printed parts for this cargo e-bike build, so let me get you up to speed. While a lot of these parts are going to be cosmetic, I do need to make some that are fully functional, and one of those is a spacer that is going to close the gap between the upright bin, the cargo bin, and also the platform that is angled. So, I need to design a piece that can be permanently attached to the bin, but then with one bolt, I can just bolt it to the grating to hold it in place. I always start in Illustrator so I can get a reference, which is also dimensionally accurate because I include a ruler in the photos that I'm using as a reference. Here is the profile, one of the profiles, here's the bolt holes I need to make, and also a dimension of the lip that I'm trying to get to go under the bin. After quite a while in Fusion 360, here is the design that I have come up with. You can see there is a slot for me to drop a nut down into the middle to hold on to the larger bolt. Then there's four bolt holes that are going to be attaching to the side of the bin. So basically, this piece is always going to stay on the bin, but then I can just do one larger bolt that goes through it, and you can see this has a whole bunch of angles going on, and hopefully it's all going to line up. I also made some recessed provisions so I can get a tool in there to help lock down some of the nuts I'm going to be using to attach this to the bin. I'm still pretty new to 3D printing, and I am using PETG because it's quite a bit stronger than PLA, but it also is a bit harder to print. I'm actually using a lot of 3D printed parts on this project because I have a lot of other projects in the queue that I'm going to need to be able to 3D print parts for and I wanted to practice on this bike as it is not as important as those other projects. A lot of these parts are admittedly a bit over engineered for what they needed to be. I could have done a much cruder way of attaching the bin to the bike and they would have worked just fine but I wanted to challenge myself a little bit and make a more elegant solution. Remember this bike I found in the trash and it was supposed to be something I finished in a weekend that I just slapped together with some duct tape. So this is way off the mark of what I was trying to do. My first print, the prototype, it was a bit too tight for a lot of the tolerances and I should have compensated for that. This nut barely fits in there so with my further designs I did get a little bit better and I made the tolerances a bit more. Thankfully, I was very close. However, your first print is probably not going to be perfect if you're doing a functional part. At least I got it to where it does work and it is going to work for the application that I wanted. However, I did make a few mistakes along the way. Some of my measurements, as you can see, this is the fifth block that I have made and I really only need two of them. My reference photos were very close although not perfect. As you can see I did tweak the design slightly with changing some of the angles because although it would have worked just fine because the bin is flexible I did want to try to get it as flush as I possibly could. Because I wanted to remake this part anyway because the gaps for the top slot for the nut also needed to be slightly larger. I did get away with hammering it in from the top but this caused the initial part of the middle to be broken. So I did get the nut to go all the way down in there with a hammer but it ended up breaking the part slightly and here is my refined version with a nut that has a flare on it so all the dimensions are correct. The nut just drops down in there and everything works as I have intended. Now that's all well and good when it comes to attaching to the bin. However we have a new problem where we need to retain that through the grating or the front rack on the bike. This is my custom step down washer that is sized correctly to fit the grating holes so that when you throw a bolt through this washer it is going to sandwich completely through the grating and then into this block that we have designed. If you also remember that one of the design requirements of attaching these bins to the bike was that I was going to be able to easily 
remove them without a bunch of extra tools. I may end up welding on some flares to these bolts so that I can just tighten them and loosen them by hand without even needing an allen wrench. And lastly, another custom washer that is going from the inside of the bin that is going to spread the load over these four bolts so that there's a bit more material as opposed to just the thinner wall of the bin itself. Now that we have all of these parts printed, we can go ahead and throw them more permanently on the bike itself. So the first thing is to line up all the mounting holes. It is very imperative that this gets aligned perfectly because it is going to interface with the grating. If this is off, then the main bolt that goes in the middle is not going to line up with the grate. If you ever need to line up some holes, the blue tape with some pencil mark reliefs makes a very easy way to do this and your holes are going to line up perfectly because you know the outer dimensions with the blue tape and also exactly where the holes in because you scrubbed over them with the pencil. I'll first start out with some smaller pilot holes and then finish up with the actual size drill bit that I need. I could probably get away with not using these metal washers as I already have a plastic washer that is going to be spreading the load across all these bolts, but it's not gonna hurt anything and I already had them, so might as well just throw them on there. And now I can put on the main piece that is gonna be permanently attached to the bin and they are just going to sit on there and be the receiving end of the larger bolts that are going to finally attach this bin to the rest of the bike. Is this part a bit over-engineered and more complicated than it needed to be just to hold this bin onto the rack? Yes, I think so, but I really enjoy how it came out, and it is extremely sturdy. Next up is a bunch of cosmetic parts that I designed for this build and although they are basically unnecessary because they don't really add any function to the bike, I am veering off from my original plan of just making something functional to something that might actually look cool too so I spent a lot of time thinking about and trying to design something that was unique and different looking. But first I got to get the battery out of there so that when I drill through to mount these on the side of the battery box I don't drill into my battery. Even though these panels are basically flat they still do have about a three millimeter extrusion and I also put some bevels on them and there's something about just having a little bit of three-dimensionality, it adds a lot in terms of how things look because all these edges and angles are going to hit the light in a slightly different way and it really does change the look from just a flat panel that is painted to something that has a bit more depth and texture to it. Let me reiterate to you guys that I am a noob when it comes to 3D printing, especially 3D designing, so doing flat panels, really not that hard but once you start getting into all these crazy angles it gets much more complex. In this video I'm only showing you about five seconds of the 3D model but trust me it took me a very long time to figure out how to do this. Even since this video my 3D printing skills have gotten a lot better at just tweaking the settings in Cura so these tree supports were a lot harder to remove than they needed to be because I just needed to adjust the distance between the support and the actual model. I didn't really have a vision for how I wanted this design to look, but I wanted to put louvers in a larger project in the future, so I wanted to kind of see how printing louvers would actually work, and these are functional, so air and light can pass through these louvers. They're not just just like something that looks cool, they are actually functional. These front panels were definitely the hardest to design so far because there are about three or four different angles that I needed to hit in order to allow them to line up with the rest of the bike frame. I was just going to mirror the front and the rears, but I decided to go the extra step and make the rears slightly different, adding some hexagons because everybody knows that hexagons are the bestagons. You'll also notice I integrated some mounting holes into the front and rear panels, and that is so I can add another 3D printed brace between the front panels and the rear panels 
for more bracing everywhere so that these panels were not just kind of flopping around and only attached at one point. I did make another mistake by not putting a brim instead of just a skirt and this would have helped with lifting on some of the edges of this part but I decided to keep it and use it anyway because it's just a couple millimeters and you might not see it. All of this experience does help me get better at 3D printing though and next up was I needed a way to mount the battery and keep it held down so this is also an integrated battery holder that I have designed and this is going to help so that the battery just isn't flopping around in the battery box. In this design I also wanted the DC to DC converter to sit on top of the battery so I integrated some clamps to allow it to snap into the top of the battery case. Is this design way more complicated and complex than it needs to be? Yes of course it is but it also allows me to get more familiar with designing more intricate things in both the 3D software and also printing them. I've also never designed a functional clip so I was really hoping that I got this right because if I made it too strong then it would just snap off the clip and if I made it too weak then it would probably snap off as well. So there's a fine line between not enough and too much when it comes to making these kinds of clips. I also wasn't looking forward to reprinting this entire piece so yes I could have just done a tester where I only printed a section of this but I was pretty confident that I was going to get it to work and I actually nailed it on the first time which is awesome and rarely happens. Thankfully PETG is a bit more flexible than PLA so these were able to move out of the way and clip inside and it actually holds this on extremely well. I was pretty surprised. I thought it was going to have a lot more wiggle room going on. Okay more problems with the front bin. So I have a very solid attachment point at the back of the bin but this allows the front of the the bin to flop up and down now because it's only sitting on top of the rack. Driving down the road and seeing the front of the bin bouncing up and down and hearing it is definitely going to bother me. So I wanted to design a way to attach the front of the bin so that it is secure but also make it so it is easily removable and I didn't want to add more mounting points that I had to unbolt. So I came up with this cleat design that is going to slot into the front and hold that down but only still retaining the main mounting bolts as the two in the back so I didn't have more bolts that I needed to remove to take off the front bin. And just like I mounted the rear brackets I am also mounting this front cleat in the same manner with some washers and bolts and all that holding everything down very securely. I was a bit weary on how secure this was going to hold it down and I also was afraid that this cleat was going to be breaking off or not strong enough but thankfully on the first try I got it to where I could slide this down into the cleat receptacle and it holds it extremely firmly as if it was bolted down. It's actually a really good design. I was anticipating redoing this design maybe five or six times because there are a lot of angles at play here. You want it to have enough room to be able to slide the bin out from the back like rotating it but also have it grip enough to where that the angles all match up and thankfully I don't know how I did this on the first try but I guess I was just super lucky because it locks in there and it holds very firmly and it's very easy to take the bin out. I still have a ton of things to do left on the bike and here are some future clips of me making a custom seat. I will take care of this in the next episode. I know this episode was almost all entirely 3D printing parts and unfortunately most of it I'm not even showing you because of how long it took me to design these parts. So even though it looks like it only took 10 seconds for me to just come up with these parts there was a lot of time designing so thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one